Well, thank you, friends, for watching this video. Tonight we are doing our Bible study based on Genesis chapter 24. I am Gian, the pastor for Victory Church, and with me tonight a beautiful group of friends. Miss Tony here, how you doing? Fine. Great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing, Eddie? Wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. How are you doing, Tracy Lynn? <laughs> Mr. Brandon, how you doing? I'm okay. You're okay? You sure? Yeah. <laughs> and Miss Penny, how you feeling tonight? Oh, fabulous. <laughs> and Charlie? All right, all right, all right. All right, that's great. Well, excellent. We have a wonderful lesson tonight. We only have one verse in this lesson, and we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who wants to read it? Which one is it? <laughs> it's the scripture at the top of the page. Oh, there it is. I, I can read it. Okay. Let's do it. The servant took ten of Abram's, Abraham's camels and left, the, then left that place. The servant carried, it with, carried with him many different kinds of beautiful gifts. He went to Mesopotamia to Nahor City. Actually, uh, you, you did good. You did good. No, no, or now we're <coughs> city or something. Yes. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right. We are reading only one verse tonight because there are some things that I want to share with you about it. It's very interesting. You will see. Well, let's see. First of all, what is the context? Here is Abraham in search for a wife for his son Isaac. You remember... He buried his wife, and now he is in need for a daughter-in-law. He wants somebody, and he doesn't want anyone, just somebody there in this area <coughs> in Canaan. No, he said, no, 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 I want somebody from my family. As you can see in your notes, printed notes, and of course, I'm going to put this on the screen now, here on the video. The family of Abraham started it with his father, Terah. Terah also had Haran as a son, who has Micah and Nahor and Betuel, children of them, who is the father of Rebekah, which eventually became Isaac's wife, right? So Abraham said to the servant, I need you to go to my family and get me a girl from that group. Abraham trusted his family. He knew the kind of people they were, and that's why he asked Eliezer, that is the name of the servant, according with Genesis chapter 15 in verse 2, and said, Eliezer, I want you to go there. And he took, as you can see, ten camels. And with the camels, many different kinds of beautiful gifts because he wanted to go and impress the family, right? Eliezer needed to go with all those camels to that land. Eliezer took these camels and all those uh, gifts and started his journey to look for Rebecca. On your notes, you see this map that shows you where Rebecca was and where Isaac was. The estimation of several people that study this route consider that they were over 500 miles trip. Wow. 500 miles trip. Now remember, no airplanes, no vehicles, no cars. Camels. I did some researches about it and found out that the camels walk between 25 to 30 miles per day. So let's calculate how many days of this trip. Who has a calculator and takes 500 miles and divided by 25? 20 days? 20 days? It is 500 miles divided 25 days, miles per day, right? 20. 
So it's approximately 20 days to go from where <coughs> they were all the way to Rebecca. Interesting fact about camels. Do you know why camels survive so well in the desert? Why? Everybody thinks it's the hump on their back, right? It's not. It's their nostrils and their respiratory system. It's a very intricate respiratory So air comes in, and it circles back around, it comes back around, it comes back around, it comes back around. So it's a very long canal that goes back and forth that keeps dry air from entering and drying out from the inside. It moistens the air before it reaches the actual camel. That's why camels can last so long, because they get less dehydrated from the inside out. That's pretty cool. Camels That's pretty cool. cool. Thank you, Al. Al just joined the study, and look at that. Very, very smart man. That's good. Read it somewhere. <laughs> he just made it up. <laughs> no, of course he knows that. All right, Eliezer, we were talking about the characteristics of this guy. Obedient. First, I want you to think of these guys. Imagine you are working for an old man for many, many, many years. You know your boss, and you know exactly what he likes, how he likes things, and eventually he says to you, I want you to go into this journey 20 days with the camels, go and get me a wife for my son without telling him any more specifics so Eliezer needed to figure it out how in the world he will find a girl for Isaac there is where obedience takes place you know something guys when we obey to our superiors to our authorities whether it's in the house parents right or in the workplace, our supervisors, or for those who are in the school to their teachers. When we obey authority, the Lord will always bless that individual. Obedience is a key factor to be blessed, but it's not easy, right? One of the things that uh, you probably will agree with me that happened to Eliezer was that during those days well, while he was walking with the people that he had with himself is that many ideas crossed his mind especially in a trip of 20 days when you are to the unknown you are being sent by your supervisor Sometimes it's the Lord sending you to certain missions, right? You just jumped into the unknown. Certainly you don't know what is going to happen. You just have to do what you have to do. And you are going to trust in the Lord. And of course, somehow you trust in your instincts, right? But there are ideas that cross your mind. One of those ideas is, well, what if I don't find the girl? Right? What if I fail? Which is probably one of the biggest fears that all of us have, right? What if I fail in life? You know, for instance, parents that just have a baby, they, they wonder about it. They, they think, what if I fail raising this child, right? Or someone that got a promotion, is in a new position, and now says, will I succeed? What if I failed? Right, I just spoke with one of my friends who was uh, in a is in the middle of a transition from Virginia to Florida. He is a pastor friend of mine, and I hope that you will hear this video, Pastor Glenn. Love you, brother, and I hope that the Lord will guide you in this process that you are. <coughs> Sometimes we just wonder, am I going to succeed in this new adventure? Right, doubt fear, a lot of thoughts. Well, you know what I have discovered, guys? That when we are obedient, we don't need to second guess. We don't need to be thinking about what if this, what if that. When we obey what we are being told, and we just do what we are being told, there is power in that obedient heart. There is power. But in order to succeed in our mission, 
naturally we need to keep focused. We need to keep focused thinking on the assignment. And the more that you think about your assignment, more revelation will come to you. Okay, I want you to think right now of the assignments that you currently have, okay? Whether it's with your job, or your business, or your career, your family, whatever it is what you're doing. The more that you think about it, more ideas are going to come to you. And let me give you an example. Let's suppose that I hire somebody to do a particular job here in the church. Let's say I hire somebody to do some work in the fields, right? Cleaning the fields, for instance. And the guy has the tools. He has the tools, he has the time. But he goes there. And instead of being thinking of what he has to do, his mind is wandering. And he's just lost thinking of any number of things, not paying attention to the task. He's not going to succeed because he is not focused on what he has to do. But the more that this guy is thinking about that particular task, more ideas are going to come to his mind. And he, this is what I'm saying to you guys. The miracle of obedience, the Lord will reveal to you great ideas about what you are doing. Question. Is the Lord creative? What do you think? He's extremely brilliant. He has always great ideas. Can he share those ideas with you? Never does. Right? He can share those ideas. But the Lord rewards obedience, those who are focused on the job. But when, when you have an assignment, whatever is what you have to do, and you are not paying attention to what you have to do, it's like someone driving, but is more preoccupied on selecting the music that is listening to instead of paying attention to the driving, boom, accident, right? Mm -hmm. So in obedience, there is a blessing, but requires full attention. If you want to be blessed, you need to pay full attention to your assignment. You have to, and you have to be honest in what you do. Think about this. For many, many years that Eliezer worked for Abraham, he did a lot of businesses for Abraham. I can imagine Abraham saying, Eliezer, listen, here's this money. I want you to buy me some camels there. Eliezer, listen, I want you to go to buy this particular commodity there. Right? And in each one of those negotiations, Eliezer show integrity. And that is something that we need to think of. Our integrity. The other day I was talking with one of my friends about the importance of keeping our reputation impeccable. As much as we can, right? Because anyone can just start talking trash about you and try to destroy you, right? There are people that have envy, jealousy, they hate you, whatever. It's possible. But as much as you keep your integrity, that reputation will keep you clean. Honesty. And that is what takes you from one place to the other. And one day, Tracy and I were talking about years uh, ago when she switched careers. Not careers, but employment. And she said that that particular company closed doors. And when she was about to leave that building that very day, the CEO of the hospital said to her, well, I'm sorry that we are closed and that you cannot continue working here, but is there anything that I can do for you? And she was very smart. She said, what about the letter of recommendation? Right away. They went to the office, got the letter, left the building with the letter of recommendation. That letter of recommendation took her <coughs> to one of the most important positions that she could have in her career working in the medical field, right? Because the recommendation, your reputation, when you are doing what you are doing, it doesn't matter how little could, could look in your eyes what you are doing. It doesn't matter how yeah. insignificant that could look. I used look. to 
had that mindset too, but then I just, that's when I rebuked it, like, no matter how little it is, because, you know, like, at the dream cut, and then you always look at people who work at these oil field jobs, or look at these serious jobs, it's like, man, look at these people, they're working real jobs, look where I'm at, but then at the same time, I was, like, looking at the blessing from what God's given, and then I, I kind of, like, just rebuked that, like, right, right. still be, still do what I do. Correct, and you keep your integrity, honesty, integrity, you know, that is something invaluable, invaluable i mean anyone can, can say well you know what maybe he's not that smart but he's honest he's not going to steal from you mm -hmm. <laughs> that speaks millions mm -hmm. very very loud you know it's like uh, here in the building all of us with keys and alarms alarm codes it's it's a great thing to say well i have keys to my church i have an alarm code to my church why is that? Because you have a reputation. You are honorable, honest. And but you can also go the other way too on some people. Like I know some people like talented individuals, but it'd be hard for me to write a letter of recommendation for them oh. because I can't honestly say their integrity is, is you know, is, is, is on point. I can tell you they're fantastic, talented individuals at what they do. But I can't tell you that they're not going to try to do something behind your back. Correct. And that is... Oh, the other way, right? oh uh, I think you are absolutely right. There is nothing worse than somebody asking you, can you give me a letter of recommendation and you hesitate. Yeah, it's hard. You know, I have said no to some of them. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot do that right now. What, what was that? Why? Like, no, like do what? Like when they asked you to do like... To write like, a letter of recommendation. Oh, like a, what should I do or what should I... For instance, uh, this particular guy, I remember, he did a little things for me here in Odessa. He worked some things and he said to me, can you please write me a letter of recommendation? But I knew that he was doing some things that were not right. Oh. And I said, I'm sorry, but I cannot write a letter stating that I know you, that you have a good character. <laughs> oh yeah, like very fake with like a, yeah. Correct. That happened to me like at an old job whenever he says, I need you to sign it right here because he's, you were there with me when you saw that Sammy didn't replace the thing. I was like, well, I mean, I didn't see it, but I just heard you say that, see, he didn't replace it. But, I mean, I even told him, are you sure did you saw it? And, I mean, just because I was there, I mean, I didn't see it if it was messed up. But then when I did sign it because of when I was there, then they said, hey, uh, they they said that you, uh, I think Leo was getting on to you because you, they said that you were there to sign it. Well, it turned out that Sammy, like, I guess... The part was there, it was messed up, but you tried to say that it was, I was like, see, that's what, why I decided, like, when he tried to give me the sign more, I was like, no, dude, I'm not, because the thing is, I'm not bearing fake witness, and you should know what my, uh, and the thing is, man, that's just honesty, dude, and I'm not going to be, All right, and, and that is what we are talking, right, the lack of honesty. From Ex sure. There was a verse on Exodus about a bribe, too, to pervert one's, uh, right. yeah, that, I forgot what the verse was, but I even made a graphic of it, it was about taking a bribe, like, I remember a dude stopped me in the middle of nowhere, and I was just like leaving my leaving the house, and then he just like stops to nowhere, and he's like he just barely moved, and he's about to start this job. All he needed me to do was paint a cup for him for a drug test, and then he was about to actually give me like two hundred on the spot. Like I would have made like easy two hundred bucks there if I. But then I so they told me the Holy Spirit was like nah. Correct. Yeah, and I actually <laughs> turned that down, man. And I needed gas money and everything, but I just straight up turned that you know nah. Right. No, that's just crazy. I mean, someone asked for pay for. Urine. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, the lack of honesty, and yeah. you know that will take yeah. you nowhere. Watch American Greed. We watched that last night. We binge watched. Kind of like what you were just talking about: integrity, honesty. You know, I mean. Correct. It's, it's just a bad deal. Exactly, and of course, hard working. You know, person. We we need to be that kind of people, right? That nobody doubt that you are busy. You know, you don't need to, to be babysitted, right? What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, no. You know what you have to do. You focus on your job, and, and you look for ways to be more productive. That, that's, that's just like that. And the results are going to speak for you. That makes you a good example for everybody. And that was the case with Eliezer. He was a great example. All, all the rest of the employees that Abraham had, they were just looking at Eliezer like, man, that, that guy is really something. You know, honest, hardworking. It's a great example. 
And of course, he was efficient because this is the deal, guys. When you are doing your job and you pay attention, then you will find ways to make the job or the task more effective, right? You think, wait a minute, I'm doing this, it is so repetitive. There is, there has to be a way to do this faster, better, easier, right? That makes you more efficient. And of course, you are responsible at that point. Those are characteristics of Eliezer. But again, imagine 20 days, he is on, on this mission that he doesn't know what is going to happen. And he has those ideas in his mind. Here is what I have to say as well. Obedient people do not argue orders. When you are obedient, you don't argue the orders. You just say, yes sir, yes ma'am. And you do what you are being told. The thing is, when people are arguing orders, you know, first of all, the supervisor feels that they cannot trust in that individual, right? They just feel, man, I got this figured out. I'm the responsible one here in, in this task. I'm giving you this assignment, and you are arguing my orders? Really? You see? That's, it's a big mistake. It's a big mistake. But sometimes people can argue mentally with themselves, mm -hmm. right? They don't say no to the supervisor, but in their own heads, they are arguing the idea. <clears throat> and it is a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Because at the end, if you really want to to be compliant, you will do what you were told to do, right? So think about it, all this argument in your head and arguing and arguing about it, it took you to no other place but the same place of, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. That is why Eliezer was so effective. And uh, naturally, he learned that when he's being sent, when he has been told about something, he just rested in the fact that somebody else gave the order. So he's free. Yeah. And that freedom allowed him to enjoy his day. Because let's face it, guys, let's face this fact. Do you like to have fun in your day? Or do you like to be miserable? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Naturally, we like to enjoy our day. But that is the deal. When we are in the workplace, and we just do what we are being told to do, we can enjoy the day. Just being relaxed, thinking, you know what? This is what my, my supervisor said. And if she says that I have to drive from here to there, and it's a big extra route, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to enjoy the route, right? If you are the boss, you know why you told this person that. The other person doesn't know. What is what that person doesn't know? That you as a supervisor are expecting a phone call in the following half hour. And if that phone call comes through, while the person is out there, is going to, to drive just five more minutes to pick up that thing and bring it back to you. Right? But if the phone call doesn't come through, that person will just come back. You see? When you are obedient, you don't see the whole picture. You don't know the plan of your supervisors. That's why it's so important just not arguing the order when you are doing your, your business. Don't argue the order, not even mentally. Just follow the order. The Lord will bless the obedient one. You focus. Pay attention, you are relaxed, you do things with integrity, and then enjoy your day. Enjoy your day, because that is one of the blessings that the, the good Lord has for all of us. The, do you know that, guys? The Lord wants us to enjoy our days. Do you think the Lord is miserable out there in heaven just by looking at the humanity, how messed up is? No, He is not miserable. 
because he gave us to the humanity, to the humankind, the tools and the blessings and everything to be happy and content and have a good life. We mess that up. <laughs> but it's not his fault, right? He wants to help us still today. He wants to help us and give us new opportunities. But he, the Lord, he dwells in a place of joy and peace. I want you to picture that. The holy throne of heaven is surrounded by His splendor, His majesty, His glory, peace, love, and joy. There is no drama there. <laughs> you know, there is no emergencies there. In the holy place, there is peace and contentment. And everyone is part of it, that environment. And that is what he wants us to learn. And that is what I want you to see tonight. He wants you to enjoy your day. And good part of that is stop arguing the orders that you receive from your supervisor. You disagree? Well, you know, it's... It's my manager's call, right? It's the owner of the company's call. It's the, the children say, well, you know, it's my dad's, my mom's call. The students say, it's the teacher's call, right? Whoever the authority is, you know, it's their call. I'm going to do that. I'm going to argue. Focus, pay attention, and enjoy your day. You know what is interesting? Anybody who learns that, and becomes a great number two, eventually will become a great leader. Everybody that I have seen in all my life, being a great number two, eventually becomes a great leader. Because, because it's installed in their hearts, that ability. It, you know, it carries the leadership, because <clears throat> that person has no trouble whatsoever to obey, to be compliant, to follow a vision. So with that being said, we wish you a beautiful night. And if you don't have a good relationship with the good Lord tonight, friends, we invite you. Open your heart to Him and say, Lord, I need you in my heart. Please forgive me. In the name of Jesus. From Victory Church, we all here say to you, good night. <laughs>